Harrison was an incredibly beautiful, loving, funny, vibrant, and intelligent two-year-old little boy. He was the center of his parents' universe and was more of like a little brother than a cousin to my sister's and I. Harrison was Michelle's sunshine. She would always sing to him, you are my sunshine, and if you ever met him, you would see why. He could put a ray of sunshine in any of your cloudiest days. Hanging out with Harrison was one of our most favorite things to do. Almost 11 years ago, on a beautiful summer evening, Michelle had taken Harrison, my two sisters, Alex and Abby, and I to the Riverfront Park in Washington. At the time, I was 13, Alex was 10, and Abby was 8 years old. We were all sitting on a park bench watching the boats go by on the river, as Harrison loved to do. Suddenly, people started yelling to watch out. As I looked behind me, I saw a van heading straight towards us. I got up to run, but I was not fast enough. The van had struck all of us except for Abby. I remember flying through the air as the spin of the front tire threw me. When I got up, I was so confused about what had just happened. Who would drive a van through a park full of people? The first thing I saw was Harrison lying on the ground, already surrounded by medical personnel. I will spare you the graphic details of what I saw of Harrison's helpless little body laying there on the rock. I knew it wasn't good. I gathered my sisters and told them not to look at Harrison. I did not want them to see the extent of his injuries. In the midst of all this commotion, I could not find Michelle. I knew she wouldn't just leave us there, so we began to look for her. I noticed her purse still sitting on the ground next to where the park bench had been. I ran to it to get her wallet so I could show her driver's license picture to people to help us find her. I asked the police officers and the medical personnel if they had seen her, but everyone said they didn't know where she was. Then I realized that there were many people under the van, and they appeared to be helping someone who was trapped. I went to the police, police officer again and asked him who those men were helping under the van. He told me it was a 13-year-old girl who had been injured in the accident, but it was Michelle. Her legs had been caught in between the park bench and the drivetrain of the vehicle. As the medical personnel were trying to free her legs from the entrapment, she just kept asking about Harrison and her girls. All they could tell her was the girls were fine and Harrison was being taken care of. So she knew Harrison's injuries were critical. My parents had been notified of the accident and came rushing to the scene. They took us to the hospital in Washington as Michelle and Terrell were flown to other hospitals in St. Louis. Alex and I were being treated for our injuries. I had just gotten back from x-ray when I heard my mom shriek in the room across the hall as she fell to the floor. I asked the nurse why my mom was crying, but I knew it was Harrison. I knew he was no longer with us. My dad had taken Terrell to Cardinal Glennon to be with Harrison. He was with Terrell when the doctor told him that Harrison's injuries were too severe for his little body to sustain. My dad has described to me what it is like to see a father lose his son. I have a picture in my mind of what that looks like, and no parent should ever have to hold their lifeless child in their arms. Michelle's injuries were so severe that she had to have surgery immediately. It wasn't until the next morning that she was coherent enough to talk to my family. My parents, grandparents, and Terrell went in to be with her. Terrell could not bring himself to tell Michelle about Harrison. My grandma had to tell her that Harrison was no longer with us. Michelle had lost her sunshine. Not only did my grandma just lose her youngest grandchild, but now she had to watch her own child suffer and grieve the loss of her baby. At a very young age, my sisters and I had to learn what it is like to love someone so much and how quickly they can be taken out of this world forever. We were too young and too innocent to know what that kind of pain feels like. So who would drive a van through a park full of people? As it turns out, a family was at the riverfront that day celebrating the family reunion. A particular family was getting ready to leave the party. The mother had started the van and left it to idle while saying goodbye to their family members. Her two-and-a-half-year-old son had climbed into the driver's seat of the vehicle and pulled the van into drive. The van was able to jump the curb, and then it struck and injured four innocent people. All of this is why we are here tonight. This was a freak accident that could have easily been avoided. Michelle and Terrell have turned their tragedy into something that can allow Harrison's message to be heard in order to save other children's lives. 
The message is, never leave a child left left unattended in or around vehicles. You would never leave a million dollars in your vehicle. Why would you leave behind something much more valuable? The extent of injuries that can occur are endless. From children dying due to the extreme temperatures inside of a vehicle to choking themselves while rolling up the window. All of these circumstances can happen in a matter of seconds. So I ask you, please, don't ever leave your child unattended in a vehicle. And when you do see a child alone in a vehicle, please stay with that child until a parent or guardian has returned. Now that you know our story and you are aware of the possibilities, you can bring awareness to others. We believe Harrison's message can save lives. Please help us in spreading the word. About three years after our tragedy, Michelle was preparing for yet another operation, which was one of many. The nurse came to tell her that they would be unable to perform her surgery that day because they had found that she had become pregnant. Michelle and Terrell embraced this bittersweet moment of joy and fear. Although they were scared, they were excited to share their news. Michelle had invited all of, invited all of us over to look at some new outfits she had bought. When she came out for her fashion show, we realized that she was wearing maternity clothes. We were elated. Not that this child would replace Harrison, but we would once again be able to experience the pure joy of having a little one around, and Peyton has helped us do just that. Soon, Michelle and Terrell realized that due to the extent of Michelle's injuries, she would not be able to take care of Peyton and continue to work on keeping children safe. Terrell would have to quit his job, and together they would establish an organization which would allow him to work from home and help Michelle at the same time. Personally, I was very worried for them with this huge life-changing decision they were making. How are they going to make enough money to support themselves and a newborn baby? But they put their trust in the Lord, and with the support of their family, they went for it. The organization which I am referring to is now known as Harrison's Hope. Now looking back seven years ago, what was I thinking? We are so incredibly blessed with a vast network of supportive friends and family that there is no way this organization could fail. And I think it is obvious tonight as we look around the room and realize that we are in a different setting than the past six years. Due to the unending contributions and encouragement, this dinner option has increased in size every year that we have outgrown our previously used facility. We cannot thank you enough for your continued love and support. We know we are truly blessed to have all of you in our lives. Thank you.